Hello everyone, Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the show. Today I'd like to talk about simps, men who put women on a pedestal, roll out the red carpet and worship them. These castrated, whipped, sorry excuses for men bend over backwards to satisfy their partner or spouse, but often endure a worse time of things with relation to intimacy and are less happy in general. They think that their rewards will be higher, but in actuality they are reduced over the long run. These guys spend all of their money, time and resources on women, but are being played like fiddles. For example, I've had several married friends openly admit to me that their spouse flagrantly lies to them on a regular basis. They have little to no time, and with regards to the bedroom, they probably get some once a month if that. In this video, I'd like to point out some revealing features of simps, how to avoid them, and most importantly, how to avoid morphing into one yourself. I have a few examples of quintessential simpery from my own life and the experiences of family and friends. In my previous video on jealousy and envy, I discussed briefly the band that I was involved in during my mid to late teens. I spoke about how it saved me emotionally at the time, sparing me the forlorn, empty existence afforded by chasing girls and relationships back then. It really gave me something to invest my time and energy in, and I've since taken that mentality forward to YouTube, reading, writing, personal projects, and so on. My band would practice at the drummer's farmhouse in the country. He had an awesome converted barn with great acoustics, and we would stay there for one afternoon every fortnight or so to write songs and practice. The bass player started going out with a girl two years younger, and with honesty, I'd say that he was a six, and she was a four to five out of ten, if that. It seemed like they spent every minute of every day with each other, holding hands everywhere they went, and this went on for about two years. There were a number of instances where we would arrange a practice for the weekend, in good time with plenty of notice, when and if we could get him on his own. Fortunately for us, he didn't bring it to practice, but there were times when he just wouldn't turn up and make up some BS excuse. When we subsequently investigated where he'd actually been, it turned out that on most occasions he was either at her place or had gone out with her for the day. So in actual fact, he would lie to us. And if you think about it, Look at bands like Megadeth, for example, a heavy metal band, thrash band. Dave Mustaine has actually spoken about the fact that the closer playing in a band is the closest you can get to someone without actually uh, having bedroom fun with them. So that's really important. And then you form a strong bond and a strong relationship, almost like a family, when you're composing and playing in a band together. So if he was willing to lie to us, that's fairly illuminating about his character. It obviously wasn't enough for him to spend all week with her at school. He had to give up his three-hour band practice sessions as well, so this is bearing in mind that I was putting in about 20 to 30 hours of practice per week, working on my own playing, in addition to writing and composing material. I think I and one other person, maybe the drummer, were the driving, key driving forces in the band. This was my passion and much more than a hobby. It consumed school and my life more generally. In fact, we had numerous shows lined up at the time, and while they were some of the most enjoyable times in my life, we as a group knew that she came first in the bass player's mind. Fast forward to the present day, and they split up many, many years ago. And he's since married someone else. Complete and utter nonsense. In a similar musical theme, we had a singer for a while that insisted on bringing his girlfriend and later wife down to practices, which was annoying at best. We used to rent out a little porter cabin at times in between using the farmhouse, and she would often come along. In between every song, we couldn't have a band discussion or chat because as soon as the last note was played and we muted our instruments, he'd be over to his girlfriend who was sat down watching us either to make out or talk about some garbage. It ate up so much time that I truly believe we spent more time talking than playing anything. For me, this was my passion, and it still is, albeit on a much smaller scale these days, given everything else I have to do. I couldn't understand and still don't why these individuals saw fit to try and sabotage that. This is the reason you need to keep simps out of your life. They are castrated. They lack the balls to stand up to their partners and say, no, I'm practicing with my band today. I'm working on writing a book. I'm going to the gym. I'm reading. I'm working. Whatever their passion is. I've never understood throughout my life the thought process that makes a guy act in this way. And perhaps someone can enlighten me. Perhaps they feel if they don't do everything their partner asks, then they'll leave them. And that is legit scarcity mentality. I was discussing this topic recently with my brother, and he revealed some prior knowledge of Sims. A school friend he was reasonably close to over the years got a girlfriend several years ago, his first I believe, 
and subsequently shut out everyone in his life. He used to hang out with my brother on a regular basis and they'd known each other since pretty much preschool. But as soon as his first girlfriend came into the picture, he jettisoned everybody. Not a word. He deleted all his old schoolmates off Facebook, unfollowed everyone on Twitter and so on. Now what man in their right mind would do that of his own volition? There was no evidence of a falling out at all, so it must have been her pulling the strings. Somewhat amusingly, to me at least, my brother confided to him that he wanted to get a dog and call it Rollo. After he broke off contact, my brother checked his Facebook and saw that they had called their dog Rollo. I mean, not only is he a simp, but he's a copycat also, it would seem. I think that the subservient existence associated with being a simp is brought about by insecurity and innate fear of never being able to have a relationship with another woman again, or being scared that intimacy will be taken away from you. Now, why would someone be bothered about losing that, especially if your life has been without it previously? I know that they aren't completely comparable, but for me, the hours of enjoyment afforded by playing music live, along with the nerves and adrenaline that also brings, writing your own book, making videos on YouTube, reading about science and nature, traveling and so on, dwarfs the cumulative enjoyment of however many 10 second experiences uh, of bedroom fun. What kind of person sacrifices their own ambitions and passions for quite often the non-existent, unreciprocated gratitude of a relationship? I'm going to talk in a more abstract sense now that I've covered a few gut-churning examples of simpery from my own life. I once saw a girl's about page on Facebook who was a friend of a friend, about 19 years old. She was probably a seven. Under works at, she had written, nowhere I'm a princess. And I know this veers away slightly from the video topic, but the sense of entitlement is overwhelming. I can see for a fact that whatever guy ends up with her is going to be absolute sim fodder. It really is in your best interest to avoid them. Or if you've been infected by their presence, remove them from your life entirely. If not because they won't help themselves, but also because if you care about the simp in any way, it can be heartbreaking watching them get castrated and destroyed. Therefore, you need to insulate yourself against this behaviour and be vigilant for the warning signs. Believe me, you don't want to end up this way. If you are well versed in the philosophy of doing your own thing, you should be aware of how to do this. There are many superb videos from eloquent, knowledgeable creators that can provide advice and guidance. I'd really appreciate your comments on this, thoughts and perspective down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. This has been The Lone Wolf. See you next time.